Hey y'all, welcome to Lecture Me Dr. Richter. Today we're going to talk about Birds of Prey or Harley Quinn Birds of Prey or that Harley Quinn movie. So what makes this movie so significant and important is the way that it's both an amazing superhero film and it's also a feminist blockbuster classic and it gives us everything we want from the cinema today. So some of the things that it does is it actively deconstructs the male gaze. When we're looking at the male gaze that's based in the theory by Laura Mullen which basically states that the history of cinema has been shot from a male gaze. Now, the male gaze doesn't necessarily only apply to men, but it's a particular way of filming in which men are the subjects of film and women are the objects, that basically they're supposed to sit there, look pretty, and not talk. Now, this male gaze has influenced a lot of cinema, and it's important to note that, of course, maleness and a male gaze is not inherently bad. But when we see the same repetition of perspective over and over and over, we're only seeing the world from a limited point of view. So this is what's important about offering us different perspectives. And when we look at the movie Harley Quinn with the female director Kathy Yan, who is notably the first uh, Asian American woman to ever direct a superhero film, what we see is a very different version of Harley Quinn than we do in other films and uh, animated representations, such as most notably the film prior to this, Suicide squad. So how are the representations of Harley Quinn different in this film then in Suicide Squad? Well, one of the important things is the first immediate thing we notice about Harley Quinn is the fact that she's wearing a shirt that says her own name on it. Rather than wearing a shirt that says Daddy's Little Monster, which makes her seem claimed, owned, and possessed by the Joker, this film at the outset announces her emancipation as an independent person by announcing her name on her own shirt, Harley Quinn. And that's really a metaphor for the whole film, how it it allows Harley Quinn to narrate her own experience. She authors her identity in this film. Logically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. Yeah. Are we ready? This film also deconstructs the male gaze by filming the world from Harley Quinn's perspective. Now the film is kind of split into two different styles, which some people say is like a criticism of the film, but in my opinion, it's because we're seeing the world from Harley Quinn's perspective, and then we're seeing the world from this dark, noir, gritty uh, version of Gotham that we get in other DC series. And the whole point of the film is to show us this confetti, happy, exuberant perspective, uh, like colorful way to see the world that we get when we're seeing the world from from Harley Quinn's point of view. So the film goes to great lengths to give us that visual style and anytime we're in her world and her perspective, we're having fun. Isn't this fun? It's just like the sleepover. <gasps> we should order pizza. Big Cosmos. Harley, focus. Okay. And that's another amazing aspect to the film is that her life force floods the whole screen and gives us energy. So if you get into this film and this film works for you, it's one of those films that really like makes you want to go out and kick ass and take names and to really take control of your own life. One of the important things about this film is emotionally how we can connect with her as a character and take that energy out into our everyday life. Another notable aspect of the film that's very progressive is the way that it deals with Harley Quinn's sexuality. Now Harley Quinn is known for being a bisexual character and in particular has been represented as being in a relationship with Poison Ivy. Unfortunately, film representations such as The Suicide Squad basically eliminate her bisexual orientation and in fact define her solely by her relationship with the Joker. Oh, calm down, Daddy. Pardon? Oh. <laughs> Listen, you are my guests to this handsome hunka hunka. And you belong to him now. Yeah. <laughs> Which not only does a disservice to her sexuality in general, but it absolutely writes out or erases her bisexuality. Now, bisexual erasure in cinema is a very has a very long history and is an important political issue to consider because there's almost no representation of bisexuals in cinema, particularly bisexuals that explicitly claim to be bisexual or explicitly express their bisexuality. Now, that's becoming more known in television and media, thankfully, but it's still something that's 
that's very rare. And in this film, we see references to Harley Quinn's bisexuality immediately in the beginning of the film when we get references to her being with other women, such as the motivation for one of these female characters being after her at the beginning of the film. And there's other jokes of it in the film as well, as well as there being other references to queer characters in the film. So this is a queer, inclusive universe that's empowering and supportive of women. And this is something also to discuss with the film title. So the film title was originally Birds of Prey, The Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, but has since been changed to Harley Quinn colon Birds of Prey. And one of the reasons for that is because it didn't make as much at the box office as it was you know, initially projected to the opening weekend and people thought it might have to do with the film's title. But the whole title of the film being Birds of Prey and then specifying Harley Quinn is a really important political aspect of the film. Because by the end of the film, Harley Quinn learns that it's not just about her self-interest, that that's something that she needs to give up in order to align herself with other women that are different than her in order to film an effective community that can fight back against evil, and in particular, patriarchal evil. The villain of this film is essentially a representation of patriarchy and sexism, and the women come together at the end of the film to fight against this, and each of them has to overcome their own individual focus in order to unite to form a superhero team to fight for a better world. Now, this might be a formulaic structure that we often see in superhero hero movies, but it's very different in the context of this film because it's ultimately making a feminist argument, in particular a third wave feminist argument, about women coming together across their differences to form a universal movement against sexism. And what the film affirms is that they all have a self-interest ultimately in doing this because the only way that they're going to be protected is if they mobilize together as a force. And this is notably in the service of a young Asian girl, which reflects reflects the director uh, as a filmmaker writing in Asian representation into cinema. We're increasingly seeing Asian representation in cinema, but it's still something that we have a long way to go on. So it's very refreshing to see this very smart, clever, young female Asian character, and that basically the film is talking about generations of women and how these older generations of women need to band together to create a better world for women coming up. And that's one of the amazing things about this film is the way that it allows us to visualize a feminist politics that's rooted in collective action in a universal struggle against a common enemy in the case of this patriarchy. He's not just after the kid anymore. He's after all of us. Sure as hell after me. I just robbed him. You just betrayed him. You just killed his BFF. And you're dumb enough to be building a case against him. So unless we all want to die very unpleasant deaths and let Roman go finger fishing in the kid's intestinal tract, we're going to have to work together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. One of the disappointing things about this film is how much money it made at the box office the first weekend, but even more so the way in which people talk about it. They've talked about it as being a flop or a commercial disaster, when in reality it has made a fairly decent uh, showing at the box office. But some of the things implicated in this whole debate and conversation surrounding the economics of the film are gender issues. What is the reason why the film didn't do well at the box office opening weekend? Could it have to do with the fact that we have a central female character in the role? Well, absolutely. If you've seen this film, even if you have issues with it or don't like it or have criticisms, it's absolutely a solid superhero film that should perform as well as an average other superhero film, but it didn't. And this even goes back all the way to the beginning because DC did not give it the budget that it deserved. In fact, it has the lowest budget of any DC film. So really, if it's not even being fully backed from the beginning, can we expect that it would rise to the same level as other superhero movies. But I think it is still an amazing film with the budget that it had and the special effects and the action sequences give you everything you would want from a superhero movie plus some because this opens up an entire new world that we don't get in any other representation. It's absolutely its own visual and aesthetic 
universe. Some critics argue that it's not as good as Deadpool and insist on comparing it to Deadpool, but look, this film isn't trying to be Deadpool, it's not trying to replicate Deadpool, so we shouldn't be comparing it to Deadpool. It's its own visual universe with its own tone and stylings, and it's shot from the perspective of Harley Quinn, and that changes the whole nature of the film itself. The way that people have expectations about what superhero films are supposed to be ultimately limits the whole canon of superhero films, and it also undermines innovative and new superhero hero films such as this one because in this instance the film was only out for like two days and everyone had already made up their mind about it and I want to be part of the grassroots movement to get people into the theater to go watch this film because it's absolutely better than you would think it is based on what you might read on the internet and in fact it is critically doing really well critics tend to support this and say that it's a good superhero movie and audiences that have seen it tend to enjoy it so when we're looking at how expectations play a role in cinema it's really important to Say, well if we have a new type of hero in the figure of Harley Quinn and we have a new type of director and the figure of an Asian woman director then you know what we should allow for new types of superhero movies and that's the whole point we need all perspectives everyone should have a seat at the table and we should give everyone the opportunity to make their version of a superhero film and that's what this film is what you are so cool Another interesting thing about this is that this is basically a movie about what it's like to be a woman, period. It's a superhero film in the sense of it's a woman trying to survive after she leaves, leaves an abusive relationship. And so although, of course, she has she was a villain, now she's basically an Anna hero, and by the end of the film, she's a superhero. So, of course, you know, she has these elements that make her a superhero, but really the whole film is about her just trying to survive. And the beginning of the film is about her trying to eat this egg sandwich that she's so excited to eat and she keeps getting kind of you know keeps getting interrupted from being able to eat it but by the end of the film she finally is able to eat this egg sandwich and that's a really big metaphor for what the whole film is about which is that she's just trying to survive and provide herself with what she desire what nourishes her what makes her feel good about herself and by buying this sandwich for herself even though it's small and you know not that expensive and maybe doesn't seem that special she's buying it for herself and she's giving it to her Herself, and that's claiming her independence as a character. So at the end of the film when we watch her eat the sandwich it's an affirmation that women in this art form can express themselves, can author themselves as independent film subjects, and can nourish themselves and provide themselves with everything that they need and want through this cinematic art form of the superhero film. This film is a part of a new breed of movies that's about women, made by women, for women, because this is a woman producer. It, Marco Robbie produced it. We have a woman screenwriter, we have a woman director, and we have a woman starring in the central role, as well as all the other main characters being female and the villain notably being Ewan McGregor representing this old style version of patriarchy. And we see this also in films like Charlie's Angels and other films that have come out recently where basically you have these explicit feminist critiques that are about women and how they're not taken seriously and how they're not given authorship and how they're not given places to speak. And this film speaks loudly by saying women are here, they've arrived, they're going to speak and they're going to speak out and they're going to claim the world for themselves. So, by the end of the film, when we see her eating this egg sandwich, that's what this film affirms. Women are here to stay, we're taking an active place in cinema, and we're gonna give ourselves and other women everything we've ever wanted, and we're going to eat it and devour it and enjoy it. So, this new Harley Quinn movie, box office flop or successful feminist blockbuster that gives you everything you've ever wanted from a superhero film? You decide. Depends on if you like egg sandwiches. Class dismissed. Uh, 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 uh.